What's up, everybody? I wanted to do a midweek update on the markets and go over, you know, what kind of things we can look at when crypto as a whole is on a bit of a, we'll call it a mild slide downward at the moment. Uh, obviously, many projects are showing signs of accumulation from whales. Others might be selling off and a lot of decisions can be made while the market is a little more on the quiet side or moving in the wrong direction where pumps aren't quite clear in terms of uh, which ones to ride, which ones to um, you know, take profit in when there aren't really opportunities to take profit at the moment um, for most projects at least. So what I'm going to highlight here for around 10 to 15 minutes is some of our whale metrics and, and what kind of things we can identify, beginning with our whale holders distribution model that is available for all of our Sandbase Pro members. All they have to do is download this, uh, basically make a copy of the model that I'm going to link in the description of this video. You can simply go to file, make a copy, and you'll have your own version, which you can then go to add-ons, go to sand sheets, plug in your API, and you'll be able to update in real time the percent changes in whale addresses and how many there are um, dependent on the project. Uh, usually we deem whales any addresses that are worth around $100,000 or more at minimum. So Bitcoin and Ethereum are of course the exceptions because there are thousands if not tens of thousands of those addresses of that variety. Uh, I think even hundreds of thousands for Bitcoin, but um, those are more um, measured a little differently on this model. Um, regardless, what we try to look at here is the purple lines, which I've sorted from highest to lowest. A few of them are even off the axis temporarily because a lot of accumulation has been going, going on um, during this market slide. And uh, what I try to look for um, to identify what projects might have some positive activity going on behind the curtains is a very high 90 day percent change, uh, which is highlighted in purple here. This means, for example, you know, looking at Keep Network, uh, there are 37% more addresses deemed $100,000 or more than there were 90 days ago. That's a big percent change. Going down to the opposite end, Loopring, for example, has 13% less addresses that are deemed whale addresses compared to 90 days ago. So a lot can kind of be extracted from this model alone. And the idea uh, that I had in mind when putting this together was to give a snapshot of many projects, assuming they're ERC-20s, uh, where we have this data for, and of course, there are a few exceptions like Bitcoin, XRP Network, Binance Coin. Um, but generally speaking, we can get all information on one chart here. Um, in terms of 90-day, 7-day, and 1-day change of the amount of whale addresses in terms of percentage. So they're all on an equal playing field. And um, right now, we can look at a few such as, um, you know, Bancor, which has an, a great 90-day return. But over the past one day, whales are actually beginning to drop off. Um, something more consistent, all on the positive side, would be rent, which has a off the charts, 90 day percent change, 14% seven day, seven and a half percent one day change. So that's good. And we'll actually look at Ren here on the second half of the call. Um, you know, there's there are a lot of different projects we can look at here. But overall, um, look for the kinds of projects that are seeing a nice positive return on 97 and one day altogether. And you'll generally be riding up the wave with whales who are accumulating at any given moment. Now, keep in mind, this model is measuring the total amount of addresses, and I'm about to transition over to combined total balance here. And we have both available, both total addresses as well as combined balance um, here on Sandbase. And for the uh, purpose of this call, I'm gonna focus on balance of address for a few different projects beginning with Bitcoin here, what I'm showing is the total balance for um, projects that 
or I'm sorry, not projects, addresses that hold between 100 and 10,000 coins at any given time. The red line here is just 100 to 1,000, and the yellow line is 1,000 to 10,000. I'm going to take those off, but wanted to leave them up just for the beginning to show you some context on how we're combining them to form this pink line. So what this pink line is doing is over time, uh, you'll see during down periods, you'll see the pink line go up. This means that uh, holders with that amount in their wallets, 100 to 10,000 Bitcoin, which are all millionaire addresses, by the way, um, it's showing that they are moving up with their accumulation during these down swings. And then when we hit these tops, usually right before, like August 31st here, for example, profits started to be taken by these whales. It peaked about, I don't know, give or take, yeah, about a week later. And then we had this big drop off. Um, whales actually sold a little bit here, uh, stayed down. And then you can see this accumulation started here. And what do you know? Over the next seven to 10 days, we have this bounce. Um, and even though we've dropped down here, notice how the whale cum cumulative balances have stayed pretty flat and, in fact, had a huge rise just a few days ago on the 25th. Uh, that's a good sign. This is definitely considered to be kind of a bullish divergence in terms of whale activity. Uh, of course, it's just one metric of many, and you'll still want to look at circulation and address activity, which uh, Dino and I'll cover on Friday. Um, on our This Week in Crypto call a bit more. But if I were to zoom out here to, let's go like the last three years. Notice how there's this sharp, sharp rise going on right here, right around the bottom that was in like November 2018. Um, it took a while for Bitcoin's price to finally recover when it was, you know, buried below the, the $4,000 threshold. But eventually especially right around here in, uh, early Feb in early 2019, we saw a nice uptick in these addresses, cumulative balances, and then we started to take off. And as we took off, they started to take profit. And then when we were at essentially a bottom right here, notice another big accumulation spike from the whales. This is how they do it. They wait for prices to go way up, take profit. It's gonna send the price down. As soon as the price gets as low as they want it to go, they'll stack on a lot more Bitcoin to their wallets. And this is how they profit and uh, make more and more as whales who are very powerful and dictating where markets go next. But look at the long stretch here from August 2019, really all the way up until the all time high in uh, early to mid 2020, uh, April 2021. And then they eventually took profit right before the all-time hit. And we had this big downswing. And then suddenly it catches all of the non-whale traders and the, the regular Joes out there off guard. And they all see the price just fall off a cliff here in May. And when this drop-off happened, their sell-offs suddenly stopped and we saw accumulation again. Um, and this is, this is really a, a very important metric that anyone with the Sandbase Pro membership should be uh, keeping an eye on. Uh, I think it's a fantastic one. And this is, of course, just Bitcoin. And I told you I'd look at a few other ones. Uh, so let's take a look at Litecoin here. And what I'm doing for Litecoin, um, instead of just looking at, you know, all addresses that are, you know, something like a million or more. I'm, I'm looking at the, the group right below exchange addresses, just as we did for Bitcoin here. We're not just looking at all addresses. We're looking at 100 to 10,000 addresses, um, 10,000 Bitcoin uh, sized addresses, I should say. So if they're over 10,000, yes, there are a few uh, actual human traders out there who are buying and selling, but the 10,000 and up addresses for Bitcoin are largely going to be controlled by exchanges and um, not have as many uh, behavioral indicators out there that are going to be useful. That's why we specifically look at that highest tier of mostly um, actual traders and hodlers of Bitcoin. So going back to Litecoin, we're looking specifically at the 1 million to 10 million tier. I found that the 10 million and up tier uh, holding Litecoin is mostly exchange wallets. So they aren't going to be very valuable to us. 
Uh, but looking at the 1 million to 10 million, notice how I've got Bitcoin sort of overlaid here in dark purple. Litecoin's price is in dark green. And we want to look for times that Litecoin has kind of isolated itself and moved up against just the flow of Bitcoin and the way it dictates markets. So let me make it a little bigger here. Notice how Litecoin right about here had a big peak. And right before that peak, literally about, yeah, the day before, yeah, May 8th is when they went from 13.3% held of Litecoin supply all the way up to 15.1%. So that's a huge 1.8% swing uh, that went up the day before Litecoin hit. And as it hit, they actually were already starting to take profit. So they pushed up the price to you know 389-ish or so, and then took profit. We had kind of a rebound right here, and they took a lot more profit right before that rebound. So if you were following what the whales were doing, you, you would know that this rebound right here was kind of fool's gold and something that was intended to get a little more FOMO one last time before the price dropped off a cliff, along with Bitcoin, of course, and, and things that were external to uh, Litecoin's performance. But you can still see the point being made. Whales were driving up the price here a lot, a lot between you know the time Bitcoin hit its all-time high all the way up until the following month. This was around the time altcoins hit their all-time high. Uh, before dropping off. So after that, you know, it sort of got flat. Uh, we had this big drop off in Litecoin's price and pretty much all of crypto's prices around this time. They were selling off a little bit on very minor bounces, another big sell off here on a minor bounce. Um, and then they eventually decided at the beginning of this month, September 2nd, they were going to drive it up again with 9.8% held on September 2nd to 11.5% the next day. So that's, a two, uh, again, a 1.8% jump. And then what do you know, the next week or so, we see a big price rise in Litecoin temporarily. It did drop back down without the whales really doing much here. They, Because they're so far away from the huge prices that were here, they were likely just content about holding on even if the prices started to drop off, which they have. Um, and just recently, we had this huge spike going from 12.2% held by this 1 million to 10 million tier, all the way up to 14.47%. So give or take about 2.5% they just accumulated here in the last few days. And so far the price has stayed dormant, but if Bitcoin starts to rise up again, which I'm not going to predict or um, focus on for the purpose of this call, um, Litecoin would likely do pretty well because whales have accumulated a lot of coins here and um, the price will likely drive up with some assistance from, you know, Bitcoin and the rest of the markets. One other project I want to show would be REN. And REN, again, is of the same 1 million to 10 million uh, coin tier that we showed for Litecoin in terms of regular traders, uh, as opposed to just all exchange addresses. We see a big accumulation pattern here over the past six months, uh, really beginning in early April, right around Bitcoin's all-time high. And, um, you know, we saw some accumulation here followed by some weird profit taking. There isn't quite as much correlation as I would like, but I do really find this part fascinating here on September 19th, where there was a big upswing. Uh, looking at price, Looking at price, they had the upswing right after this dip happened. This was the market-wide dip that happened about 10 days ago. They accumulated. They saw that prices weren't immediately recovering. And so they actually just dumped a ton right here. And then as prices began to rise again, they started this rapid accumulation process again. Um, it, this is not going to be a perfect correlative metric by any means. It's kind of a midterm to long-term thing where you'll see like a big upswing in um, whale accumulation. And then maybe like a couple weeks later or even a month or two later, you'll finally see that big swing come to fruition where the whales get rewarded. Um, 
So long story short here, I want to just give everyone some context as to how they can use supply distribution to their advantage. Uh, ERC-20s are the main assets you'll see this, this kind of metric available for, but Litecoin, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, which is an ERC-20 coin, uh, Binance coin, and XRP are the exceptions to that rule. One final thing, if you want to go for something a little more simple, you can create a combination metric where you can look at the top 10 non-exchange whales divided by the top 10 exchange whales. Generally, when non-exchange whales are accumulating, it's a good thing for the project because it, does, it means that there is not uh, an immediate uh, indicative risk of a sell-off. Whereas if exchange addresses owned by top 10 whales are accumulating, that can be a pretty scary sign that there, there could be some sell-offs being planned. Now, the way to, way to make this metric, I'm going to recreate it really quick before showing what's happening. You'll simply want to go to top non-exchange addresses. Notice how I'm not going to click on the chart yet. Then I'm going to go to top exchange addresses. And I'm going to hit combine. You'll see here X1 plus X2 with X1 being non-exchange, X2 being exchange. I'm going to change this to a division sign. So we're dividing non-exchange by exchange addresses. And then I'll just call them uh, whatever I want, non divided by exchange, something simple, just for your own memory. And now I'll click, click to apply selected. And there we go, it's back. And what we're seeing is quite interesting. We had this huge run up of the ratio of non-exchange whales um, beginning to own more and more than the ratio of those top exchange whales. And that was a good sign that would indicate that prices could rise. And it got all the way up to here. And then right before this local top, just about a day before, uh, notice how the ratio dropped from four, four to one. Yeah, 4.01 to one, all the way down to 2.57 to one. So that meant that exchange addresses were become, becoming a, a little more prevalent here combined with non-exchange whales uh, beginning to likely move to those exchange addresses. It was probably some of the same people uh, that were doing so. And when this ratio drops, the price will generally drop along with it. Um, right now, the ratio is staying down and altcoins have bounced and especially Ren has bounced up pretty high. Um, but you're going to want to watch something like this closely even if it's just individually looking at non-exchange versus exchange addresses and seeing how they're sort of fluctuating against each other, this ratio can be really helpful, I've found. So that's just a little recap of how to use some whale metrics. I hope you guys found this interesting. And uh, I hope we see you all on Friday at 2 p.m. UTC for another big This Week in Crypto call. Talk to you all soon.